Here we are going to look at what is called as a cycloidal cam. Let us start by plotting its displacement time diagram. So we start with this cam angle axis. We'll be taking the angle uh, turned by the cam uh, during the rise on this axis. Then we are going to divide this into equal number of parts, say 12 as I've done here. And from these parts we'll be drawing vertical lines whose length will be equal to the rise of the follower we are aiming for. And uh, then we are going to draw a di diagonal, say from this corner to the other and extend it a bit. At the tip of this diagonal, we'll be drawing a circle whose circumference will be equal to the rise. I have shown that circle in a magnified form over here. And uh, you will see that we have divided that circle into the same number of parts over here, 12 parts. Then we are going to take these parts and project them on its vertical diameter over here and we'll be numbering these parts say from 0 to 12 once we have numbered the parts their corresponding projections on the diagonal can also be numbered like this then from these projected points we'll be drawing set of lines which are parallel to our original diagonal like this and now we have two sets of lines these inclined set of lines and uh, this other set of vertical lines wherever corresponding lines intersect will be marking those intersections for example this line is coming from projection number two and this is my vertical line number two so i'll be marking its intersection so like that i'll keep marking intersections and finally join them all with a smooth curve this curve is the cycloidal displacement against time curve let us use this cycloidal displacement curve that we just uh, got for the rise as well as the return and you can see this curve has a horizontal slope at the beginning and at the end so that tells us we are going to have a nice smoothly starting velocity because velocity is the derivative or the slope of the displacement curve so if slope is horizontal if the slope is zero the velocity is zero so it starts smoothly with zero velocity another nice thing the velocity curve itself has a zero slope at the beginning and at the end. So its derivative, which is nothing but acceleration, will also be zero at the beginning and at the end. And finally, the acceleration slope is finite all over. And therefore, our jerk will also be finite or within limits throughout the cycle. So in general, the cycloidal displacement against time curve that we have chosen is a overall smooth curve it gives us all the parameters like velocity acceleration and jerk within limits now let us see why it is called as a cycloidal variation so here is a graph of displacement against time and on its vertical axis we have placed a circle that we used before whose circumference was equal to the rise let us set things in motion so this circle will be rolling without slip on the vertical axis and uh, we are going to take the projection, horizontal projection of a point on its circumference, that is this horizontal line, while this vertical line is the time elapsing uniformly. And their inter uh, uh, intersection is tracing the curve that we had. Here is a 3D model. This is our drawing board. And on one edge of it, there is this green roller, which will be rolling without slip in the vertical direction. On the circumference of that roller, we have pivoted this arm, uh, which is slotted. So this arm will not only follow the projection of this point, but it will be keeping horizontal all the time. Then we have another slotted link here, which will be moving in the horizontal direction uniformly. And wherever these two uh, slotted links intersect through that point, we have placed this pencil. So it will be moving on the board. Let us see what kind of curve it traces. So this is the kind of motion we are getting. And the curve that you see, the white curve on our drawing board, is the cycloidal displacement against time graph.